Welcome guys, it's happy to have you on board and if it's your first time, consider subscribing. There's great content on the way and hit the bell notification so that you don't miss anything. In this video, we're gonna create a full screen horizontal page slider. No JavaScript, simply using HTML and CSS. These slides have been a popular design pattern for many years and there are hundreds of jQuery plugins out there to create them. Today, however, we will demonstrate that HTML and CSS is more than capable of handling the task and once we start coding, it may surprise you how little CSS it takes to create some pretty neat effect. So let's get started. First, let's look at what we will be building. We have a full page slider with navigation. There are transition and fade-ins, pretty much a typical slider. In order to create our slider, we'll be using radio input element along with the check pseudo class. It is this pseudo class that will allow us to target and style each individual slide along with any annotation or content we may wish to overlay. Well, in order to follow along this video, you can always download the starter files by heading over to github.com forward slash team codebook forward slash CSS sliders. Once you are there, you can scroll down and you will see a button called clone or download. Once you click on the button, you will download the zipped file. You can always unzip it and open it up in your favorite code editor. And you are now started to code along with me. You can always find a link to our GitHub page in the description below. So once you open up the starter file, you will notice we have an index.html file and the images folder which has four images with it. You could always wish to use different images. So once you are on index.html, we have a div with the class name of wrap and we have a radio input group named slide. Notice that we have the first one checked. This will be our starter slide. The natural behavior of the radio button to only allow for one checked element in a group will provide the checked state. If we open this up in the browser, you can see only one of these radio inputs can be checked at one time. If we click on one, the other is unselected. So this is the check state and this is the check pseudo class we will target in our CSS. But before we get into our styles, let's first build our slides. We will be placing one slide in between each radio element. Before the first input, we will add a section. We will give it a class of slide and since it is our first slide, we will going to call it slide 1. Inside our section, I am going to add a headline tag that says headline 1 and that's it for our slide. Let's copy this and paste in one section between each of our radio elements. Then I will just change the class of these section to slide 2, slide 3 and slide 4. And we will also be changing these headlines up here as well. This will be heading 2, heading 3 and heading 4. Ok, now we have 4 slides. The next thing we want to do is create our navigation. We could use our radio inputs but instead we will create labels for each of our radio elements. These labels will act as controls for our slides. Right above our slides we will create a header. Inside this header will be our labels. We will use the four attributes to tie them to the respective radio inputs. So we will use the idea of the first radio as the value of our first four attributes, which in this case is slide one trigger. Then I'll just call this slide one. With that done, I'm just going to copy and paste three more times and update each of these four attributes along with the text. So we'll change this to slide 2, slide 3 and slide 4. So far we have a div that's serving as our wrapper. We have a header which contains our navigation element. And finally we have a radio slider section combinations. Now let's go and add some styles. So it's now time for us to create a style sheet and we are going to call it horizontal.css. Opening it up, we will begin by making sure our HTML and the body elements are both 100% in height and width. So we will write HTML, body and make the height 100%. I 
and on the width also 100%. Then we will remove any padding or margin. This is to make sure that our slides will be full screen so we want to take away any padding or margin that the browser will add to either of these elements. Now we will style our wrapper which is the class of wrap. I am going to give this the height and width of 100% but this could really be of any size you want the slider to be. The div with the class of wrap dictates the size of our sliders and our images. Next we want to set our div relative and set our overflow to hidden. This is so we can position our slides absolute off the screen and we won't get any horizontal scroll bars. Finally, I'm just going to set the background to dark grey and set our text color to white. So the headline is centered. We're going to go ahead and set the text align to center. So now that our wrapper is done, let's create our headline navigation. We're going to give the header a background that is slightly light grey, then our wrapper and apply it to the box shadow. We'll position it absolute to the top left corner and then give it a Z index of 900 so that we are sure that on top of the rest of the content. Finally, we will set the width to 100 per Next, let's style our label. We'll set the color to light gray that you can see here. We must change the cursor so it looks like a length so we will set that to pointer. Next, we will display inline block. This way our labels will be side by side and centered in the middle of our header. Line block also allow for our line height to be respected, which we will add now. Let's go ahead and add a line height of 4.25 em. This will give us a larger clickable area. So the layout of our layout button are done. Let's go ahead and add our textiles and some pattern. First, we'll add the font size of 0.667 em. Then we'll add a font weight of bold and finally the padding which we'll just add 0.1 em. Let's also go ahead and add a slight hover effect and our head. For this we'll just set the background to a light shade of grey and with that our navigation buttons are done. Let's save this and look at our. As you can see we have our header and our header buttons. If we click on slide 2 the slide to radio gets selected. So our label button are performing as expected and looking good. Now it's just matter of styling our slides. So going back to horizontal.css, we're gonna style all the slides as a whole using our slide class. We will set the width and height to 100%. Now we will set each slide's position to absolute and we'll give them a top of 0 and a left of 100%. With these styles, we are pushing all of our slides off to the side of the window. Next, we will set all known Z index to 10. Then some padding. For padding, I am gonna give them 8 em, 1 em, 0. Ok, our base slide style is done. Now we must set our background images for each slide. Before we do that, on the slide class, I am gonna set the background color the same as the wrapper. I'll center the background with the background position 50%, 50%. Then I'll set the background size to cover so our images fill up the entire slide. Next, I'm just going to copy and paste some images here. So for each slide, these tiles give each slide a different background image. You can copy this code from the description below. And with that, our slides are done, but they are currently off screen. We want to move them onto the screen only when the radio element is checked. So all that is left to do is to target this text state. We are going to use an attribute selector to select any input that has an ID that start with the slide. Then we will further qualify the selector by adding the pseudo class of check. This will target any of our radio inputs as they all begin with a slide. Then by using the adjacent sibling combination which is a plus sign, we can finally target our slide. When our radio, when our radio element is checked, we want to position our slide back 
on the left corner of our wrapper. So we will set left to 0. Then we want to raise the Z index to 100%. To be sure, our slide is on top of the previous one. And that's it. Let's save that and see what we have just done in our browser. And there you have it. A nice header navigation and when we click on our labels, we get a new slide image. Okay, that's pretty cool. But as you know, the video said a full, a full screen slider and this is definitely not sliding. For that, we just have to apply some CSS transi transition. Let's go back one more time to horizontal.css. To smooth our whole slide or to transition out, we're going to add a transition to our checked slide. So inside our checked slide selector, we are going to transition our left property over 0.65 seconds. With a little ease, and this case, we'll use ease out. And since we want our current slide to wait until the next one has come onto the screen, we'll go to our slide class and add a transition from left as well. This time we want it to happen immediately, so we'll set the duration to zero. But we also want to delay it by 0.75 seconds. So these transition styles have the new slide coming in and afterwards our old slide sliding back out. While we are adding transition, we are not limited to just the slide itself. We can also do some slide transition with these headlines that we have in each slide. I'm going to target our slide h1 and I'm going to give it an opacity of 0. Then I'll translate that down the y axis by adding a transition of translate y to 100%. Then I'll give it a transition for transform with a 0 0.5 seconds duration and a point of 0 0.5 delay. We'll add a comma. Then will transition the opacity over 0.5 seconds. This transition will allow us to see the opacity and go down to 0. But it will delay the transition until the next slide is already covering it. Now we will target our headline when our input is in the checked state. Transition will change the opacity back to 1 and translate back to 0. For this, we'll transition both over 0.5 seconds and give them a 0.5 second delay. This will have our headline appearing and rising as the slide is coming onto the screen. So let's save this and real quick, let's look at how little code we have actually written. Not that much. Let's check it out in the browser. And there you go. Nice, nice new transition for our full screen slider. There you have it. We have just we have just built a slider without the need for a single line of JavaScript. As front-end developers, we have a lot of tools at our disposal. And videos like these are a great way to push those tools to the limit and see just how much they can do. With just a small amount of CSS, we are able to create some nice animation effect and built-in behavior of radio input. Arrow keys provide the second means of navigation. If you have Nick provides a great CSS alternative to the classic JS approach. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Looking back, we have come a long way. Thanks for following along the video guys. You can always show your support by liking, sharing or subscribing this video or by heading over to patreon.com forward slash team codebit. If you have any doubts, you can always ask us out on our Quora or on our Team Codebit subreddit. And you can always join our discussion at Slack. You can always find a link to all of these in the description below. Keep supporting us, keep coding big and see you in the next video guys.